Hello, MechaTubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Xenonauts uh, X Division mod with me, Blue Ankylo. Um, last couple missions, we've just rocked it, you know, flawless victories. And uh, today, we'll. Well, you're, we're actually not going to show these off. I'm just going to do them off camera, don't worry. Before we launch A Team, which is ready to go, I want to build them a new vehicle. And if we just wait a day or uh, an hour. Our first mech is ready. Comes with a Spirit Wolf MIG. We want a Timber Wolf Pulse. Pew pew pew, daka daka daka. Pretty good, right? We'll figure out a name for it later. Someone can submit submit one and we can take the best name we see. Um, it works a little differently than the other vehicles, so we'll have a little bit of learning to do here. But, don't forget to load it on. Alright. Can the mech do melee? I don't know. I haven't tried. We'll see. I'm sure the future tubers want to see this mech though, so... We better show at least a little bit of this mission. But, I don't think I'll record the whole thing, just cause... So far, the Andron missions have been fairly easy, and a massive Andron mission is just going to take a massive amount of time. Sorry, moving the mic a little bit back. It's a little bit loud. Hades, how dare you try to give your points back to Robert Gray? He wants to be a pink ankylo. Don't you dare ruin his over 9,000 points. Or else I'll show up and we'll go minus 10,000 to Hades. <laughs> if if you keep trying to give your points away, I'll take them away. Don't worry. I'll get that done. <laughs> Alright. So, we got a mech. There's a Robodog over there. This, <laughs> this is super dangerous and really not a good idea. But, mecha. Fire! didn't do very much. So, although this looks like a machine gun, it's really more of an AOE spread machine gun explosion. And, uh, it's fun. It's fun. I don't know if it's as good as having, uh, having the AP fusion cannons, but, uh, it should suppress things. And, uh, if it wasn't a robo-dog, like, this is gonna be a bad weapon for Androns, but, you know, we'll show it off. I guess we should see where we are on the map. Ah, we're still near the corner. This sh will hopefully be a dead end. We'll check that out. Alright, this corner... 100% safe. No problem. Flying around's cool, you know, we found some more aliens, or some robots. Robots, robo-dogs, robo-dogs, robo-dogs. We're gonna see a few robo-dogs today. Hades, we've played this game before. <laughs> Why do you keep trying to antagonize the streamer? I'll deal with you later. We're in the middle of an episode. I'm not going to tab out of the game in the middle of an episode. But, you know, we'll get there. So, they'll probably kill a couple civilians and then head on in to kill, try to fight our mech. Not the best sniper spot, but uh, once we stomp on all that cover, it'll be fine. This side... Hmm. Again, not super safe, but good lines of fire. Oh. 
So future two, well, we'll finish the first turn. We'll finish the first turn for the future tubers. I'm just, uh, just want to get into the zone. Just, just start thinking. About, I don't have to have commentary for all you future. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's just, uh, I don't have much to talk about, other than, hmm, there's a lot of androns and kind of a interesting choke point. But once we get set up, we should be totally good. I don't want to rush up too much, but you know, power armor, right? I'd prefer they shoot the power armor like Hades, rather than uh, Kai. Jarrell's here too, awesome guy as well. Let's put them... We're just splitting people up for the most part on turn one. Let's see what comes at us. I did miss one person. Tim! You can join the flank. Well, Hades, you do have uh, power armor on. To this point, I don't know if, if if the Ripper armor has ever taken any significant damage. I always forget the, the med tags. Couple med packs on the ground. That's fine. Oh, he died. Well, he had no chance. Okay, that's good. Let's just know there's one up there. Right there, even. The mech does have pretty good armor, but not a great matchup against robots, to be totally honest. So, future tubers, I think you get an idea of how we're going to have to play this. It's going to be a slow, hard-fought battle, but we outgun them because our weapons do a lot of damage to them, and their damage, their weapons do not do a lot of damage to us. And we have a mech, so, uh, you know, we got that going for us. It's not really very good at against androids. So. Now, we do have a pulse rifle. I might have gotten in the way of my sniper, but maybe not. Oh, vision. Oh, vision! Okay. <laughs> They're everywhere. Ah, uh, got, got my mech in the way. I stomped the, the cover down well, but... Anyway, this is just gonna take a while. I don't think it'll be super hard. Super hard. I'll uh, cut back if something interesting happens, but... You know how Androns are. They're tanky. They're... They're slow. They don't have a lot of reaction fire. We'll, we'll see how this goes. If I see a Robo Rex, maybe I'll cut back. We'll see. Ah, there's a Robo Rex! Oh no, we're all gonna die! Nah, it's fine. It's nice to know where it is, but you know we've we've done at least two of these already. Um, it's gonna be the same as the last two. <laughs> Future tubers, unless you skipped a lot of episodes, you should know the drill by now. It's not that scary, but yeah, there's a lot of aliens. Maybe we'll go Mecha versus Robo Robo Rex. We'll see. All right, I'll be back at the end of the mission probably unless someone dies and then I'll be like, oh, no Hello there future tubers. I finished the mission. It, it was pretty easy as it turns out. It took a while, but very little uh, got in our way Andron's in tier 3 Not putting up much of a fight um, If you're watching this on the episodes and not on the VODs, you should consider finding the VOD for this one We're on stream number does anyone know what number we're on? Just say it so people could go look it up. 29 or something? 28 or 29, I think. Anyway, uh, the final bridge encounter. You can't see it anymore, but the final bridge was two actions. Throw a shock charge or a, an EMP charge into the room. You've, you've seen shock charges, but EMP charges are bigger. Thornum says it's, episode, it's stream number 29. So go to stream 29, go in about near the end, and... Uh, just have a little look, but throw in that EMP charge, toss it on the ground, and then one EMP rocket. Boom. Whole room dead. <laughs> no damage. And uh, look at those stats. Lots of pulse rifles, you know, shooting, 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 shooting. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. We didn't actually get the terminal or the server corpse, but whatever. Uh, anyway, that's done. Wow. That was pretty fun. 
Uh, for the future tubers, unfortunately, you know, we got another mission to do. <laughs> and uh, considering our run of flawless, I can't see any problem here doing a, a medium now. There's only, uh, it's only like 21. What What's going to get us now will be the terror. So hopefully we see a terror dreadnought soon. Because uh, honestly, with our new armor, we are kicking some behind. Anyway, future tubers, we're going to end it here, I think. Sadly to say, or at least put a cut in till next time. So uh, I'll see you guys back for the rest of the episode whenever I get back to it. We're probably ending the stream, but sorry streamers. <laughs> All right, back in a second. It's a sad day, future tubers. What was expected to be a simple mission did not end so simple. He will be missed with a T, that's the truth. So early on in the mission that the future tubers didn't get to see, Evan took some damage and broke our flawless streak and cursed the mission. He shot a civilian with his pulse rifle from behind and hit him once and then the civilian turned around and shot him with a flamethrower at pretty long range and hit him like three times. And then someone else had to kill him or something. I don't know. It was it was terrible. But, you know, he's fine. The problem is Scotchamil. So just to paint a picture, we're in the bridge of a UFO, uh, a, a medium, uh, not a... Not a Corvette, but a landing ship. And, you know, we throw us, we, we shoot a stun rocket in. We kill a couple civilians guarding the back of the room. I'm pretty sure there's one hiding around a corner. So I send in my pulse, uh, pulse minigun, I think on Doomed Guy. Whoever had the pulse minigun. We couldn't quite get far enough to see the target, but we shoot right next to any possible aliens. We do a full burst of like maybe three or four squares away pulse minigun. I figure pulse minigun really good at suppressing. No way we'll be in trouble. So I run Squatch Meal out to just double check around the corner, see where the last guy is. One shot minigun, tore him from 100 HP to zero and perma killed him. First perma to death in a long time. Squatch Meal, you will be missed. 48 missions, 54 kills, one shot into red mist by a civilian chieftain or leader of some sort with some sort of kinetic minigun that just pulverized him and the suppression tactics didn't work so we're gonna go back to just throwing grenades everywhere in the bridge because that's the only safe way clearly every time i try to do it without grenades something like this happens he wasn't even killed by a grenade just straight up minigun damage that's unfortunate. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of a bit of a downer. <laughs> On the plus side, you know, we got another supply ship. And uh, there'll be some civilians. You know, we probably captured something. It was the leader, I think, that killed him. Yeah, we captured four warriors. That one stun rocket was very effective. Just didn't get the leader. You know, we blew up a tank. Uh, probably got some fire weapons. I wonder what weapon killed him. Probably the Vindicator minigun. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a look at the Vindicator minigun stats, because that was brutal. It's very unfortunate. We had a, a good streak of taking no damage, and then suddenly pfft, dead. <laughs> Perma dead, even. Is all his gear gone? Ah, that's a good question. Maybe. It's uh, definitely possible. What I'll do is I'll wait till the, the ship gets back and then we'll have a look. Of course, on the plus side, you know, A-Team or somebody captured a bomber operator from the civilians without taking any damage. They did a good job. And we get a data hack, which is even better. Our first civilian data hack. So, uh, you know, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. Easy come, easy go. Some people were like, this game's getting too easy, Blue. And then, of course, RNG kills somebody. It just proves that you can't... You can't go into the bridge, period. You just have to throw rockets, charges, grenades, whatever. It's just the only way to do it. 
Alright, so what do we have in B team? Do we have any spare gear? Yes. So he was wearing dire wolf armor. So we didn't lose that. He was a, uh, a rifleman. So just like Evan, riflemen were cursed on that mission. If we assign Thorinum back on right now and set him up to be a rifleman, he basically inherits the gear. So we didn't lose any of that stuff at least. I think if it had been a grenade or a rocket that blew him up, we would have lost all this stuff. But it was just straight up minigun damage. I've never seen miniguns actually permakill with the uh, Don't Die On Me mod. But they're pretty brutal. So. Uh, BT takes a devastating blow today. Just give me the antimatter. <laughs> you probably would be happier to be wearing that Ripper armor at this point. The Dire Wolf stuff doesn't really hold up all that well. Good for shooting. Bad for being shot. Alright. Well, let's just focus on disassembly and maybe build some new stuff. Um, I did a little bit of reflection, future tubers, between sessions, and we do have quite a lot of cores right now, although I'm disassembling a lot right now. We can stop this maybe after this wave and focus on things that give us alloys and alenium and just worry about that, but we actually do have in most bases a pretty good stockpile of energy and ballistic cores. Alloys though, not so great. Blue is meditating, yes. That's why I'm a blue ankylo. The range and power of, Le of Leroy. <laughs> yeah. If only your plot armor extended into uh, bridges of civilian ships. It's too bad though, that's what happens, that's gotta be one of the most common causes of death though. Uh, the leaders, any leader, Andron, civilian, um, Sizen, the bridge leaders seem to be very resistant to any kind of stun, suppression, shock, gas, and they almost always have some sort of, like, minigun. And the, uh, they always get a reaction fire, even the Androns, and basically they can kill one person every turn. And there's not a lot you can do, unless you just kill them all, or, you know, blow them all up from long range. And even that can be tricky. So I think after this is all done, uh, I might build a mech or a tank for all the uh, second, all the teams basically, upgrade the mechs. Assumedly we will be getting some new guns to upgrade shortly, thanks to our data hack. So we also can look forward to some new Gauss technology. Also hello there Robert. I do like how quickly we process things with the upgraded engineers. In uh, the second phase, we were always behind on this stuff, but now that it's like twice as fast, not so bad. Bit more interrupty on the flow of the game, though. Oh, also, hello there, Kyador. I didn't even see it. All the lurkers just playing the mini games. <laughs> All right, here we go. Data hack number nine. Mark three Goss Tech and maybe something else eventually. I'm assuming there's going to be a third vehicle that is behind one of our data hacks, as well as advanced explosives, because we only have the basic fusion explosion charge. So you know, some of these hacks have a little bit more than the Mark threes. For now, we get a bunch of Mark threes. So the rifle's a nice upgrade. The shotgun's probably a nice upgrade. The sniper, maybe we built, and then the heavy, I kind of doubt. B team has a lot more to uh, disassemble than anyone else. I think I left them not doing anything for a couple days, so they fell a little bit behind. So we're looking for a civilian carrier to get a 
carrier operator for another data hack, hopefully. And we're also looking for our first Terror Dreadnought mission that will actually be manageable. Oh look, smart guns, antimatter cores. Hmm. How, uh, how many antimatter cores do we have? Two. Well, that's not enough for anything. I think we could probably... I'll tell you what, B-Team, I'm feeling generous. Seeing as you had a brutal death, I'll upgrade one of your cannons to ma Cannon Mark II. That's, that's how nice I am for the death of Squatch Meal. Alright, got some more EMP explosives ready. Here's our first Goss Tech, the Goss Sniper Mark III. We'll look at the four of them when they're all done. It won't take too long. Goss Rifle and Goss Shotgun. Well, maybe we'll just look at those three. Not like there's... well... We can, uh... You know what, let's, let's not be lazy here. We might get the next wave of UFOs any second. Let's start upgrading the shotguns and the rifles right away. So we'll disequip these for the moment. Probably upgrade the rifles first, because they probably have more use. And, uh... We'll figure that out in a second. Rifle, rifle... Shotguns are already unequipped. Okay. Everybody, get upgrading. I'll have a look at the stats here in just a second, but, you know, surely they're better. And we do have a good amount of ballistic cores. The al alenium, you know, not... We don't have tons of it, but that's why we're doing these missions, to get more. Oh, I forgot for B-Team, there is something we should check. Was there any reactors? There was a reactor. Good. And then upgrade your weapons. And put this on hold. Priority is to upgrade guns. Alright. It does take like a whole day, or well, you know, 13 hours. Had Easter? Yeah, Happy Easter, everyone. Or Good Friday, Easter. It's, you know, fun time of the year. I mean, if it wasn't for all the whole uh, pandemic stuff, it'd be a nice little holiday, right? Goss Heavy. Okay, now we can look at all of our new guns. Alright, so Goss Technology. I did do a little sneak peek last night at the live stream, the end of the live stream. But for the future tubers, I just want to spend a minute to go over the uh, the new four weapons. They are bluer, which is nice. One thing that I noticed right away that kind of made me sad is the upgraded rifle doesn't get three shots like every other ballistic rifle so far. The mag rifle had... The mag rifle got four shots. The division rifle... All the Mark III versions. Division Mark III got four shots. The pulse rifle has four shots. The Gauss rifle does not. So that puts it at a bit of a disadvantage in terms of... Um, you know... It's relatively low accuracy. 32 accuracy and only three shots. So it's kind of easier to... Let's just skip whatever that song is. It's, uh... How do I explain it? It's it's more... Like, the damage per bullet is pretty high, but only three shots means you, you could do a lot of damage, but you have a, a high risk of doing nothing. It's got a bigger risk of doing nothing. And 32 accuracy on that burst is not really very good, right? Compared to the pulse one... Uh, 65, this is twice as accurate for a burst, plus you can fire it like three or four times per turn instead of two. You know, plus 30 damage is not nothing, but 
overall, I'm not super impressed. So our primary rifle will probably be the Pulse, and the Gauss is going to be more specifically for enemies that are weak to Kinetic. Hey there, David. And also... Well, I mean, we'll test it out. It does do a lot of damage. I think it's got a little bit longer range. It's got some suppression. Maybe it'll surprise me, but on paper, it doesn't look that great. Next up, the shotgun. Uh, what's the big difference for the shotgun? Uh, it gets plus one range, which is okay. Um, I still don't think that makes much difference because you're still firing it at basically point blank. So four range versus three range is, you know, sure. But at long range, it's not going to hit very much anyway, so you're just going to waste it. Like, even if you... If you shoot it at the maximum weapon range, it's just going to miss most of its shots, so I don't know. Um, it does 19 damage times 14 pellets instead of 19 times 12, so it's about 38 more damage if they all hit and are not absorbed by armor. It does uh, the same shock damage. Shock is what lowers enemy TUs, which is okay, and suppression might suppress them if you're lucky. Honestly, it doesn't look a whole lot better. It's a little bit better, but not a gigantic jump. Just like the Mark III rifle, it's better, but not by any uh, gigantic. It's five more kinetic damage. That's not much. And then 12 mitigation is... Uh, it's good, but it's not much. So it's kind of smaller upgrades. I thought the pulse upgrades were much better. Um, the difference was like time unit cost or way more accuracy. Even the damage went up better, right? 50 damage to 60 damage, that's plus 10. And you also get like 16 shots, so 10 times 16. On the rifle, it's just plus 5 damage. You know, not not that much, comparatively. So, not to say it's bad, it just doesn't seem as impressive. And then the sniper, uh, it's going to be real hard to beat out... Wait a second, it does less damage? I... I almost feel like the Gauss tech is broken. It's imbalanced. At Mark II, it does 190 damage. At Mark III, it does 180 damage. It actually does 10 less, but it gets more mitigation. So plus 18 mitigation, minus 10 damage. It's a plus 8 net swing. Unless you're shooting something with no armor, in which case it's just minus 10 damage. So, like... Huh. I wonder if that was a mistake? Or if there's some intentional reason here for that that I don't really understand? The range upgrade is nice, like 28 to 34 is good. It's got about the same range as a Pulse Sniper, but less accurate, and it, it costs, like, default fire modes. The 34 range is... It's not that impressive, like... The pulse, the precision pulse is 32, and the difference of two is not much, plus this is way more accurate. The cheap shot is 70, and uh, the cheap shot here is, well, 65, but at, at, at aim shots, the pulse is way better. I'm not sure exactly the drop-off accuracy formula when you're out of range, but I would be willing to bet that at most shots, the Pulse Sniper at 34 range or higher is just as accurate because of the base accuracy upgrade. Um, but yeah, minus 10 damage doesn't impress me. And overall, it's just kind of blah. Like, you know, it's kinetic, so if you want to deal kinetic damage, that's good. Otherwise, eh, it's okay. And then finally... Yo, Ryan, I got a favorite. Yeah. <laughs> finally, the Gauss Heavy... Uh, I haven't been a huge fan of these in a long time. I tried the Pulse Heavy, it failed me. This thing, I don't know. You guys remember way back at the beginning of the game when we had just the boring weapons that could not do hit anything? The main reason to bring a heavy machine gun was just to do a suppression. It very, very rarely hit anything to do damage. But it was pretty good at suppressing, so 55 suppression. Uh, this would be the upgrade in uh, Mark III, Tier three, It has uh, 59 suppression. So the thing it was good at, suppressing, it's not much better at suppressing. And then other things like dealing damage, well, it's still only 22 accuracy, so it's very unlikely to hit. And sure, each bullet does a, 
a bit less damage than the rifle, but you're never, unless you're point blank, you're never going to hit 6 out of 6. The recoil also guarantees, I'm not sure how recoil works exactly, but I'm pretty sure it's an accuracy penalty on follow-up shots. Like, you know, the first bullet might have 22 accuracy and then the next bullet is a bit less because of the recoil in the burst. And I think it works like that for the, the rifles as well. One of the reasons the antimatter is very accurate comparatively is it doesn't have recoil. Zero recoil, which means the accuracy on a burst should be the same for every bullet, I think. Whereas other weapons do have a bit of recoil. Um, lasers tend to not, though. Or, yeah, so another advantage for pulse rifle, zero recoil. You shoot a lot and it doesn't bounce around. So really the only advantage to Gauss Tech is it, that I can see is it does kinetic damage. If you want kinetic damage, this is your baby. But if you just want anything else, you probably want to go energy because pulse is so good. Anyway, that was your overview. I could be missing something. I don't I don't claim to be the uh, the god of Xenonauts, or at least not of X Division, but um that's my analysis anyway. Doesn't seem that good. <sighs> we don't have time to upgrade our guns anyway. Two more days, another wave of UFOs. Mm, so we're hoping for a Terror Dreadnought, I guess, or uh, a civilian carrier. A bomber carrier doesn't count. Corvettes. Corvettes. Alright, that's it. Well, five UFOs, let's shoot them down, and then I'll decide if I want to, uh, to do any of these missions. So we need to use the Lotuses against the Bomber Carriers. The Cruisers, we can... Uh, we'll try the Foxtrots. We're going to upgrade these soon enough. Can we swap frequencies? Yes, yeah, sorry about that. It does escalate in the later phases, I think, clearly. What you should do, if you see a, if you see a base being built, just let them build it, and then you'll get more. I don't know if you can get a base in tier 1, it would be very unlikely, I guess. And it would be a tier 2 base anyway. And if you let them build it up, it'll get to tier 4. But you'll get lots of UFOs. <laughs> uh... Alright, well, we'll trust the Lotuses for the most part. These Corvettes have never given me too much trouble. I guess we'll tail till overland just so we get the missions and then we can decide. This should be totally automatic. I don't think these things have ever caused problems. Maybe if you're trying to shoot them down with Corsairs, it might not be easy, but even then it wasn't that bad. You can't do a base without... Well, the point is you don't want to clear the base, you just want to let it stay there and let them spawn extra UFOs, then you get more missions. Alright, we haven't had any problems with the auto-resolve. We'll just stick with that to save time. Foxtrot's even there. But they are Foxtrot's with, like, fusion torpedoes. So they're not just... Not just Tier 1 bombers anymore. And honestly, I kind of think I'm going to skip this wave. Um, we're getting the waves too quickly, and I want some time to build stuff rather than do another three hours of missions. So there's nothing here that we needed... Um, I could certainly get some some more cores and some more alloys, but uh, I'm just going to skip them. Nothing personal. Do it for the antimatter. There's nothing here that would have necessarily had antimatter, though. Um, it's possible that the Androns would have us like one or two smart weapons, but um, I'd rather just finish our current construction queue, and then at the next time we'll do a couple missions. Because we were going to go without our fully upgraded Gauss weapons. And also, we're getting these UFO waves every like two days right now, so... Like, I, I could use a little break. Now we'll get like, a, now we'll get like a full week with nothing. 
All right, shotgun's done. What I want to do is actually build a couple new aircraft. So. We should have disassembled everything. Everything I want to disassemble. I should... Okay, I forgot one thing I should have thought about. I did forget. There's a few things we still need. We need the terror ships. We need the civilian carrier. And we should try to get a red queen. So the next time I see a large sizen, we're going to try it. Just to get the last research for the uh, red tech. The red queen. Might unlock something, you never know. Plus, I think it'll give us a, uh, a fang. And, you know, I'd like to build some swords. Uh, right, so aircraft... For now, I'm going to build a couple Furies, and we'll we'll just give them some torpedoes. You know, it's not even going to take very long, honestly. B team is busy disassembling. There. <laughs> That's how long it takes to build a new fu Fury. Easy. So, let's go upgrade the Foxtrots right away. Let's, let's just upgrade those immediately, because they're pretty out of date. And uh, the Fury... I don't know. It's faster, longer range, double torpedoes. Don't all red Xenos. Only Praetorians and Queens, I believe. I'll double check. Praetorian, Fang. Warrior, nope. Drone, nope. So Praetorians and Queens only. Sadly. The spoiler tier of Xenos, nope. <laughs> We haven't seen, we really haven't had the abilities to do a tier 3 terror mission yet. And we haven't seen one in a while. So the next time we get terror missions, we'll show off. And there is a secret civilian unit, a secret, uh, a secret, uh, Sizen unit. And technically a secret Andron unit, although the Roborex has kind of spoiled it already. What am I doing here? I'm, I got... I got confused. I'm probably going here. So, right. I'm going to send the new Furies to South Africa. And we're going to build probably just two at a time. We can build... Uh, we actually build a few of them. And we're going to... We're going to just... We're basically going to get rid of two Foxtrots at a time. Because this fury is worth at least two fox shots, because um, it can it can fire two torpedoes at once. So uh, that's pretty cool, you know. All right, we got another one built already. Relocate to South Africa. I'll have to build them one more fusion torpedo because they they're gonna be short one Alloys as always The fury does seem really good against anything except bomber anything except carriers and stuff basically Double double torpedoes. I'm a fan of Okay, let's send that to South Africa We'll just upgrade as many as we can. I'm pretty sure if before we get to phase four, we'll want, you know, we will want Furies everywhere. But we'll build as many as we can for now. Plus, they're much faster on the world map than the Foxtrots. Like, uh, top speed 2400, <laughs> that's, that's not very fast nowadays. Top speed, uh, 50% more, not bad. So for now, we're just going to have two Furies per base. Uh, we might upgrade more. We've got the spare hangers, but, you know, I think two of these will shoot down almost anything right now. Except the Terror Dreadnoughts. <laughs> They're special. All right, so we got South Africa. We'll do South America next. Hopefully that's not my music. My, my, hopefully that's not my audio driver crashing. It 
it is funny that you can build a new sh jet faster than the jet can get to its new base. <laughs> it's great. South America. This one is going to Soviets. I know we'll have to build a couple more torpedoes. B team, you might as well get these Andron warriors out of the way. Oh, you know what I was gonna do? I was gonna build the mechs. Well, once we build a couple Furies, I'll build some mechs. Hold on, we'll, we'll send the this one out. I mean, let me just see what we got. Okay, two Furies in South America. We need to build them one more torpedo. Goodbye, old Foxtrots. You've served us well. Even these guys have shot down an awful lot of UFOs over their careers. Let's just pretend that the, uh... Oops. The pilots just moved over to the Furies, right? The experience can transfer. Right, I need to build one for there. One fusion torpedo to, to Soviets. It's not on the way. So this extra fury is going to the Soviet Union. Getting a little bit confused. Oh, I needed one more torpedo for South America too. It's a, uh, torpedo turn. Well, we've got nine Furies now. It didn't take too long to upgrade. Soviets need one. And I think... Oh, we'll keep going for now. Oh. Uh, who's next? Two Furies, two Furies, two Furies. Europe. They've got Lancers, though. I guess we'll go North America because they don't actually have uh, Lotus. Yeah, I know my stream title was... I jinxed it. I shouldn't have said anything at all. It was a huge mistake. Okay, relocate to North America. And then build another Fury then. And this guy is sending his torpedo to South America. Aircraft management. I love it. But it does take a little bit. Yeah, Squatchamil died. It was really brutal. It was... Partially my fault, partially just dumb weapons. Purple Ankylo, congratulations, Azurus. Alright, let's keep building stuff. I think uh, C Team, I wanted to build the mech now. Assuming we can have the, the materials. <laughs> Not by much, but sure. Let's get that what, mech built. Uh, don't decommission until you unequip. Fusion, fusion. Fusion, fusion. South America. Should be transferring. There you go. Alright, now we've got three pairs of Furies ready to go. Ah! <sighs> ah! <sighs> B-team wants the tank. Well, the mech is very good against things that aren't robots. Don't worry. We still have uh, a few 
cannon weapons to upgrade too. We could do that. We do have a lot of hunters, but it costs heavy weapon systems. Hmm. I think that's still a decent upgrade. We've got nine Corsairs with hunter beams. And then three, six, nine, I think, with Goss. Uh, Twelve. So we only need six more upgraded tier three beams. The, fur the Fury is just a Blackbird. Yeah. But it's kind of got a little face at the front. It's pretty cool. Okay, well, we're going to upgrade these Lancers. Oh, Neutrino Torpedoes. Well, I guess we'll see how Furies with Neutrinos work. North America has regular Torpedoes. Australia and Europe have Neutrinos, right? For testing more than anything. All right. So that was just... I was trying to figure out what we're building next. That's all. Okay. Mech... Disassembly, more Furies. Always more Furies. This guy's going to North America, so this is the second Fury for North America. Go. North America has... Fusion? So they need one extra. Easy. Did the Lotus... Yeah, the Lotuses have... Uh, not as many torpedo slots. The Lotuses have a heavy and two lights. One of which is, assumedly, for the anti-missile system. So they can go torpedo plus a missile system and a defensive system. The Furies are the first ones to have pure double torpedo. Alright, C-Team got their mech. I was going to build... A Hyperion, but yeah. <laughs> resources. So C-Team's out of resources. That's, uh... Not really a huge surprise, given I'm skipping a lot of missions. Whatever, they could just have a little break. Technically, they can still make one more Fury, so let's do that. Furies are upgraded. Uh, Foxtrot's in... It goes... It goes Foxtrot, Lancer, Fury. They're all direct upgrades. One torpedo, one torpedo, two torpedo. The uh, the Lancers here... Like, Lancers are the first upgrade to Foxtrots, and then Furies are the big upgrade. Send the Fusion Torpedo... to... your North America? Then build... Oh, someone's got to test out the Hyperion. A-Team gets the majority of the materials. So we're gonna... We're gonna build one Hyperion here. Sorry, B-Team. I know the mechs are good. I'm not sure the Hyperion will work. Because I don't think we can equip the AP cannons on it, but... We have to test. Three hours. Foxtrots? No, no. The Foxtrots only had the one. Foxtrots, one map. If the Foxtrots had double heavy, I would not have built Lancers. There's no way I would have downgraded. I, I would not have cut our DPS in half just to build Lancers. Uh, we're just waiting. Well, let's get these guys equipped. Who knows when the next aliens attack. Goodbye, Lancers. You didn't really accomplish a whole lot. In fact, I might say Lancers are kind of redundant. Foxtrots are good enough, and the Furies are m the big upgrade anyway. Double torpedoes. Alright, where is this one going? Uh, I guess now we're upgrading... Australia and then Europe. Oh, they have uh, no space, so they have to go 
like this. Decommission. Might as well do two at the same time, just so they're out of the way. Then transfer to uh, Australia. But now we're out of advanced alien control systems, unless I want B team to send some over, which we could. Or maybe we can build, well, a couple more hunter beams, I guess. Your Foxtrots have two torps? If they do, then that's a different, maybe a different version of the mod or something? That would be very nice, though. Let's just leave C-Team alone for a little bit here. Okay, North America base. I think this finishes their job up. For now. I mean, we, we could still build more Furies. Alright, they're pretty much fully geared. Oh! <laughs> Never equipped that Gauss Cannon. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, that's better. Now we're going... Uh, Europe and Australia are all that's left for our current round of upgrades. We built our Hyperion. Okay. I do like this thing. Floating hover tank is awesome. But I don't know about this weapon selection. Rockets or machine guns? I think the pulse machine gun's as good as we can give it at the moment. Let's just double check. We could probably build a, a fusion rocket for it. So the pulse machine gun, 35 times 40, 10 shots. Or 55 times 16, 12 shots. Theoretically, a fusion rocket would be available. Hmm. But no cannons. I'm hoping that there is a third vehicle. There's gotta be a third vehicle in phase three that can equip the cannons. It's gotta be. I really hope so anyway, because the cannons are my favorite by a long shot. So I'm not gonna build everyone a Hyperion, I don't think. The one we can test out every now and then, but. Let's uh, build it a rocket, just in case I want to equip it. Australia got their, their jet. So this is going to be a Neutrino Fury, which is a little different. We will need to build one more Fury somewhere. Okay, well on break. Get that fury out of there, B-team. And then A-team can throw an extra neutrino torpedo, because they'll need one more. Although, <laughs> alloys. Relocate to Australia. And then just two more furies, and we're done our basic fury upgrade, and we can afford it. Transfer, man. At least we'll have a nice uh, set of Furies ready to go. Alright, and then like one more Fury. We just need two more Furies, and then everyone will have a pair. We need to unequip the old Lancers first. And at this point, I'm just going to get rid of all three of them together, just to save time. And then we transfer over the new Fury to Europe. And we build them, well, they just need the, uh, the one extra Neutrino Torpedo in a second. Well, the Lancers didn't really last very long, to be totally honest. And I would say if I was having a hard time in Phase 2, I would skip them. Because they didn't really accomplish too much. Upgrading your torpedoes is always nice, but... Uh, 
Uh, upgrading your interceptors seems more important in general. Upgrading to Lotuses or some sort of anti-missile tech is really important. But the bombers, I think double bombs is way better than uh, building the Lancers. Not that we had a whole lot else to do, but... That's the last Fury for now. Send it to Europe. And we need one more torpedo for it. Transfer that over, and that's the end of the torpedo upgrades for the moment. We will want... I'll probably want to build more... Well, I can tell you right now. I will build more jets before Tier 4. And we have six Corsairs that do not have upgraded weapons yet. So we could upgrade... Sure. I don't really have the alloys to upgrade with Goss, tech, Goss Cannons or Pulse Cannons. We can upgrade three of them right here. And maybe we can upgrade the other three here. Well, one, two, three... Can C team make three more, or are we gonna run out just, just shy of enough? Two more. Um, can A team actually make a spare? <laughs> yes. All right. And the only planes that need those are South Africa, South America, and South Africa. Just using the old mag tech is all. But at least our aircraft will be in full-on Tier 3 mode, I think. At least weapon-wise, and Lotuses might as well be Tier 3 anyway. Even though they're technically Tier 2. Transfer to South Africa. 3... Uh, I gotta sell some stuff one of these days. I promise what I will do is for future tubers in between an episode I'll go through and clean up some of our tier 2 uh, stuff. So two beams to the last base. We'll upgrade them all together. Uh, also we were gonna build that mech for B team Goodbye resources. At least you have a mech. Uh, B team is building, what, three? Transfer those to the bottom base. They need one more. A team has got them covered in a second. There you go, B team. Rip glorious AP cannon. Well, just because I built you a mech doesn't mean we will always take the mech. Um, I think against Rob uh, the Androns, this is still superior. Uh, but against like the Sizens, this will bypass their shield as well, I think. Um, and it does do suppression, I believe. So it's not bad. It's not all bad. This guy's cool. And we're keeping this guy in the in the wing. We're not getting rid of him. That's not the bomber carrier I want. Not the cruiser I want. I don't want any cruisers, really. Hunters. Hunters? Lots of hunters. Another cruiser. Another Corvette. Okay. <laughs> Every two days. Five, five or so UFOs show up. It's fine. We're almost done all the stuff I wanted to build, so I can't complain too much. And we might as well do some more missions, but <laughs> none of these are the missions I want. I'm, I'm kind of getting annoyed we haven't had another Terror Dreadnought, actually.
We have not upgraded these Corsairs yet. These Corsairs are definitely upgraded. The cruiser should have no chance. Actually, I want to see these Furies in action. That'll be fun. We'll deal with the uh, escorts first. Alright, let's just do a comparison here. So this is, uh, oh, wait, these guys did get upgraded. Never mind. Getting the turn is definitely the trick. You get a good timing on that turn and you set, you set. Alright, here we go. Well, we got one. We almost killed the second one. But now we're in the danger zone. Uh oh. Well, we took a little damage. Not flawless, but uh, that'll do. And then, I believe, this is the one with the older weapons. So just as a comparison, tier 2 weapons, bit wider arc, but um, shorter range, less damage. You can see the... Uh, the Hunter weapons outrange us pretty significantly here. And we did not turn as quickly as I thought I was going to turn. Oops. This is not good. Okay, that, that was definitely not the kind of uh, engagement I'm hoping for. That was fine though. <laughs> we made it up on the, the, re the rebound. There will always be a minimum of 18 days between terror missions. We haven't had a terror mission since... Ever, practically. I guess we had a couple battle ships. We had tier 2 terror missions, but never a tier 3 terror mission. The only terror dreadnought we've seen was a base attack. Interesting. I, I'll try to keep that in mind. I would swear that I've seen them more often than that, but um, I'll take your word for it. Alright, bomber carrier, robots. We've got cruiser, should be piece of cake. Don't get better foxtrots. Do you still have double torpedo foxtrots or not? You're just crazy. Base attacks and terror. I mean, I've definitely seen them in the same wave. That's happened quite a few times. Oh, I should have. Uh, I forgot. Bomber carriers, you want to. You want to attack from behind, it's very important. Dang it. This might not work. At least he turns pretty slow. Let's just target them. Because each of them had to turn a slightly different angle there to actually make that hit. But now that we're done, we can straighten up a bit. Good enough. Get out of there. All right. I like the uh, the extra aluminium alloys from the uh, killing the shooting the fighters down, and then we definitely need lotuses to shoot this guy down. 
if we want to be safe. Okay, Furies, first try. We've got Neutrino Torpedoes, which are... Well, I don't know how much I like them, but we'll see. I think what we can do is slow our speed down now. Because we don't want to get too close, but we're going to need to speed up soon to get out of his arc. So normally we would have launched a few fusion torpedoes, like at two or four, and would be flying by now. Instead, that happens. They don't accelerate very fast. I mean, we killed them, but that was... Ah! That's a minus one for neutrinos, because that would have been much safer with fusions. Now, we could have gone fast. We'll have to try again going at full speed with neutrinos, so that we don't get sniped by the laser beam thing. But I don't think we'll do enough damage in one pass, because it takes a lot longer to, to launch enough. Well, Lotuses are fine. We know how that goes. Against carriers. Okay, this is uh, fusion torpedoes on a Fury. This should be a little bit more standard. At full speed, they are a bit faster than the old Lancers or Foxtrots. So we get into range quicker. We do fire volleys of four. One volley of four is almost certainly enough, to be honest. <laughs> Why waste ammo? And we could have a, a team of three like that. That that would be pretty crazy. Yeah, the Furies have a higher sort of damage output than the Lotuses. But the Lotuses are a fair bit faster and agile, more agile. Easy enough. Yeah, nothing to worry about. I don't see how this matchup would be any harder in the harder difficulties. Even if we were a little bit slower, I can't see that being too much different. Okay, so missions. Well, we could do a robot mission for B-Team. It was trying to build a base? No, trying to bomb. We could do a cruiser, Sizens. Kind of feel like skipping another wave, but... If I do that, then there's nothing to do. So, we could just pick one or two. Yeah, Lotus get the defense. It depends on what you're shooting against, right? If you're if you're fighting against something that's got uh, missile tech or drone tech, the Lotus to totally wins. But the Fury's damage output is really nice. Um, you don't need to build all that many Furies because they have such great, great damage. Oh no, the SNV Mosco Moscova was attacked. I do like the Lotus probably most of the time, but... You know, the Furies are pretty cheap. You can build a lot of them easy. I don't think you would typically have 10 Lotus for this phase of the game. More likely to have like 4 or 5. Ah, what are we doing? We're going to do three missions, I guess. We're going to let C team do a civilian cruiser. We're going to let A team do a size and cruiser. And we're going to let B team do a robot carrier. There won't be any tech. But we are still very low on alloys right now and we need them. And this will help us you know, fill out our Air Force, and uh, I'm definitely going to be willing to skip some more waves in the future, but for now, we'll do this one. We sort of, we think we skipped one or two waves already this, 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 this month, so. Skip one, do one, something like that. 
All right, thanks for watching, future tubers. Hope you've enjoyed. I'll get people geared up, and next time we'll, uh, well, I might not show them all off again, but I'll, I'll record one or two of them and see how it goes. See you there. Thanks for watching, as always, and have a great day.